talk about the COVID inquiry. Prime Minister facing serious accusations in the latest findings. Look who's with us, Dr Parth Patel. Hi, Doc. It's good okay. to see you. What did you make of yesterday? Uh, yesterday we saw Patrick Vallance give evidence and I think, I mean, broadly speaking, he painted quite a similar picture to what we've already seen from people who have come before him, maybe filling in slightly different details, but very much on the same canvas. And it's not a particularly pretty picture of how decisions are made at the top level of government in this country. What in particular caught your eye? I mean, I mean, two things, really. First, about the relationship between politicians and experts. I think that was actually something new we learned yesterday when Patrick Vallance was talking about at particularly the first wave of that pandemic, we heard follow the science quite a lot from the politicians, as if the science could simply be followed. I think that is quite an important thing to sort of focus on, the blurring of policy decisions and expert advice. Science can answer questions, but it can't tell you what to do. It can't tell you to what extent we should be compromising young people's education to stop older people contracting the virus. That is a political decision. And early in the pandemic, we saw politicians trying to almost abdicate their responsibility in a democracy. You know, what is the point of assuming responsibility in a democracy only to abdicate it when it really matters, when the going gets tough? And I think what we saw from Valance yesterday, I think we'll see more of that from Chris Whitty today, is that sort of blurring between science and politics. Do you, are you interpreting what you're hearing as damning evidence or are you interpreting it as a government that was panic stricken, perhaps, and doing what it could to keep people alive? So these are incredibly difficult decisions that the politicians were facing at this point in time. We're talking about unprecedented interventions in people's lives with extraordinarily difficult trade-offs. Right, when we look back at these decisions, Kay, I think there were broadly two questions. There's a what question, do we think the right decision was made in hindsight? And there's a how question, how was that decision reached? And I think people would be a lot more forgiving of the outcomes or the consequences of these decisions if they thought a respectable process was followed. And what we're seeing from Patrick Vallance and from the other people who have given evidence so far is there really wasn't that respectable process. And I mean, let's compare it to other people who have had to make difficult decisions during the pandemic. At that time, I was working in a hospital in an accident and emergency department. I and my colleagues too were faced with pretty damn difficult decisions about whether or not to admit a patient, whether or not to use a finite number of ventilators on a patient. We would follow quite a systematic process of weighing up the evidence, the pros and cons, and deliberate over it and then make a decision. We don't quite see that same process of systematic deliberation, structured thought happening in politics and in government. And I think that's a problem. And what do you make of the suggestions um, over the last month or so that Matt Hancock, wanted, the then uh, Health Secretary, wanted to be the person that decided, basically, whether people lived or died? I mean, that's absolutely bizarre, isn't it? I think Mark Sedwell said this, Patrick Ballant said this, that Matt Hancock was over-enthusiastic, I think, as Patrick Ballant's words, and would often make claims without even having considered the evidence. I think that's quite dangerous. I think... In any democracy, people with power will abuse it. And the point of democracy is to try and prevent that. One thing we did see a lot... Do you think that Matt Hancock abused his power? Well, it's difficult for me to say. I'm not on the other end of the inquiry, so I can't make a judgment there. But what we have seen is that the government really didn't use parliament. Right? Parliament is the most important democratic institution in this country. And if Parliament was used a bit more, then there'd be a lot more legitimacy behind how these really difficult decisions were made. And Matt Hancock thinking he could do that on his own without Parliament, without using the decision makers that are elected in this country, I think that's a problem. They didn't need to, though, did they? I mean, they just, I mean, you know, um, history, wonderful thing, 2020 hindsight. But, you know, they, they just won a massive majority in, in, at the end of 2019. They didn't need to turn to Parliament. Maybe that was one of the problems. I think seeing winning a majority in an election as a mandate to do whatever you want without consulting the people who have been elected, that's quite a misunderstanding, actually. Like in our democracy, we don't choose the decisions, but we choose our decision makers. There are 650 of them. We don't choose the health secretary, we choose the people who elect the health secretary. I think that's very important. I think I wish more people in government realised how important parliament is to their decision making process. Yeah, Chris Whitty today and then uh, JVT, Jonathan Van Tam. Mm. How enlightening is this COVID inquiry for you so far? It's, it's enlightening in terms of a, a better understanding how decisions are made at that top level of government. But shock horror? No, I don't think so. And I think many people who have been following it are not that surprised. 
at the way in which decisions were made. And I think that's quite damning about the kind of politics and politicians we have and the problems with our politicians and our political institutions. From Chris Whitty, I suspect we will hear a lot more about the blurring of that line between government and experts. And I know it's something he's thought about quite a lot. Him and Patrick Valance have obviously disagreed on certain things, sure. whether or not we should lock down sooner or later. And that goes back to my point about the science cannot simply be followed. It must be sort of so synthesised yeah. and therefore, and then a political decision has to be made. Okay, it's good to see you, Doc. Thanks very much indeed for joining us.